So I am Chelsea Taylor. I teach um, art history here at San Diego Mesa College. Um, I have taught online the art of Africa, Oceania, and the Americas fully online. And then in the COVID transition, Art 100, which is a survey class, um, prehistoric to contemporary. Um, I also want to let everyone know that I did my master's um, at USC in teaching fully online, which is something I probably would not have advertised before COVID, but now I am. So I'm always available to help. And um, my presentation is called Constructivism in the Digital Learning Space. And I had my students create an ancient Egyptian monument. So I'm gonna share some photos with you. Can you all see that photo? Just give me a thumbs up. So create an ancient Egyptian artwork. Welcome to week or module four, the art of ancient Egypt, part two. It's time to warm up and nothing gets us warmed up as students and scholars like creativity and imagination. You are to create an ancient Egyptian artwork. Number one, flip through the reading for this week to become inspired. Number two, select some found objects around your home, school, or office. Number three, in a 30 minute activity, Please build, photograph, post, and describe your artwork. Posting your photo of inspiration will oftentimes help your grade. As you can see, I used my son's large Legos to create an Egyptian pyramid. My son is 18 months old um, now, but when I did this, he was nine months. And I was really in that imaginative, young learning space, right? So constructivism is this, this education a theory an educational theory that we construct knowledge right that we are curious individuals who construct and i want to humanize my digital learning space by actually having my students physically build something right so we'll go back in uh some ideas if you're stuck and i would kind of um just give them ideas give them um prompting ideas. Maybe your bathtub becomes the Nile River with markers, paper, and tape. You can create lush fields and uh, lush fields of palms and wheat growing at the Nile's banks. Maybe your sink becomes the Nile River and tin foil becomes boats carrying trade goods up and down the trade routes. Maybe a piece of paper rubbed with dirt and ripped becomes uh, an ancient Egyptian papyrus scroll with hieroglyphics. Maybe your pile of books becomes an Egyptian pyramid. You are welcome to use my ideas or create your own. And then I explain to them what constructivism is. The point is, when we play, we use the creative dominion of our brain. This play or activity time removes biases and barriers to our learning, which are annoyance, frustration, or time limits. These barriers are deconstructed as we engage in a play activity. Um, that out of the way. And thus our brain becomes a more willing participant or environment in and for learning. This type of learning is called constructivism. As students use their prior experiences and current environment to literally construct learning. Studies have shown it helps learning set in a deeper place in the memory. The point is get creative and have fun. I tell them the point number, and please don't spend more than 30 minutes on this activity. So are you all ready to see some of the incredible things my students created? Okay, we'll start small. This is the hook and flail, right? This student's name, um, I'm not supposed to say the name, sorry. Um, I have blocked out the student data. He's a wonderful student, and this class really took him to a different place in his learning endeavor. So he created the hook and flail and a photo of his inspiration piece, right? Um, this student um, was busy and needed to do it quickly, so she created the pyramids at her desk, right? And here's a photo of the Sphinx, um, and she kind of poses the photo in perspective, right? Like her inspiration image. This one, I was so proud of her. Um, let's go to another one. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is Pushinix. Um, if you are all familiar with um, Pusheen, the cat, she's a little cartoon. Um, this student with just uh, paper and markers created um, the cat into a sphinx and she titled 
and Pushy Nix 2019. So this art label is kind of poking fun at all of the art labels we read in art history. Um, this one is, uh, the student used one of my ideas, but I thought it was really fantastic. Um, pipe cleaners and a little boat carrying gold up and down the Nile River, right? And inspiration photos. Um, this one is really cute. These are canoptic jars, right? That, that hold the internal organs of uh, a mummified Egyptian body. And the student has, has built them in clay here. And this is another simple one, just a photo of a pyramid. But the student spent time and, and care in building this little paper pyramid here. Um, this is one of my top students. He actually used, this was wrapping paper that he found. And he soaked it in coffee. And his inspiration photo here, this beautiful old papyrus. Um, but my favorite. Um, was this one. This was a, a student who was a veteran and he was really struggling to get through the class, uh, but this, this is a really beautiful story that he wrote. So hopefully I'm not going over time and I'll read it to you quickly. He says, class, I apologize for the late reply, but I just got back from my journey to Egypt to explore the long lost tomb of the youngest known pharaoh to rule Egypt, King um, I'll put in Darwin, King Darwin. Um, he used a different name. Below is an image of me flying over the Nile River with a glimpse of the pyramid that holds the tomb, right? So he went to the beach and created this. Um, and then he talks about going into the tomb and he took photos of his wall, right? After years of my archeological digging uh, into the tunnel, they finally found the final resting place of this king. Um, so dual use, he's using found objects, right? And then he uses his son and dresses him up in toilet paper and says um, that he's a mummy that he found within the tomb. So I just thought this was really, really cute. Um, and such a creative way, right, to share um, your learning space, um, photograph it and post it to the digital space. So I'll stop sharing now. Kelsey, was that a discussion board? It was. So they were yes. sharing on a discussion board? Cool. Thank you. Very creative. Yay, yay, yay. They're doing applause. 